Glory to God. We give God all the praise, all the glory. I decree over your week. This week is going to be so mighty in angelic activity. This is a week of angelic activity and it's so strong. Let's go to Psalm chapter 122. Let's go to verse uh, five. No, as a matter of fact, let's go to verse six first. It says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem that they shall prosper. They shall prosper that love thee. Now, let me say this. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem right now. Father, I stand and everybody in JHM, we stand in agreement. We touch and agree with Jerusalem right now and we pray for peace of Jerusalem. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Now watch this here. It says, they shall prosper that love thee. What happens is, even when your mind receives the ability to even think about Jerusalem and their peace, it is a prosperity ability. Think about that. It's a prosperity ability. I'm showing you something because this is not really talked about too much. And it's fresh. But it's, it's one of the secrets to prosperity. Because the wisdom of God was speaking to me. And the prophet is the major um, channel for God's prosperity. Meditation is another one. Meditate in the law of the Lord day and night. And you shall make your way prosperous. Don't let this book of the law depart from your mouth. But why is the prophet so necessary? Because the prophet speaks the word to you now. You don't have five prophets. You have one prophet that God sends to you. You may have four prophets that you like. But you have one prophet that God sends to you. Your life will never go anywhere until you realize that. There are many people that have seven prophets that they like that are not going anywhere. Because if the Shunammite woman took in Jeremiah, she would not have gotten blessed. Think about that. The Shunammite woman was assigned to Elisha. Her job was to take care of Elisha. God does not confuse us. And so watch this, saints. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Now, I want to go up to verse 5, and now we're going to deal with the deep stuff. Psalm 122, verse 5. Now, I want you to say, I, I want to hear this. What's going on in the thrones in your life? And I want you to think about this. What's going on in the thrones in your life? And when it comes to the throne of finances and the throne of provision, are you winning? And if you're not winning, why aren't you on that throne dominating? And if you're not on that throne, who is on that throne dominating? I want you to see this. You have a throne for every department of your life. There's a throne for love. If hatred is winning, that means that um, you'll be subject to different things. Jealousy, envy, competition. Uh, you'll be subject to slander. Because there's a throne of love. Uh, there's a throne of love. And First John talked about perfect love that cast out fear. So if... You are not walking in this throne of love dominating, then fear will dominate you. Fear will rule you. And you will constantly be suspicious of everything. You'll never have the ability to be bold and trust God because perfect love is really perfect boldness to trust. Perfect love is perfect trust. It's the inability to be suspicious of God or anyone that God sends to you. If I have to investigate who God sends to me, then why do I need God? 
And why do I need faith? And why do I need trust? Imagine going through TSA and the TSA scanner done scanned you and it said, go past and somebody stop you while you walk and say, wait, 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 wait. You like what? I need to check you. No, the scanner just checked me and said I was good. No, no, no. I need to check you. Now you ain't got no uniform on. What you need to check me for? No, I need to feel you. Great balls of fire. Wait. No, I said that. I said that. Listen, what you need to check me for? Huh? Huh? Where, where your uniform at? Who gave you the right to check me? You would think that that person is out of order, right? Because you already went through TSA and they already scanned you. And they said you was good. So why is this person, <laughs> why is this person coming out of the woodworks and trying to scan you again? And that's what goes on in your life. God sends a prophet to you. You go try to scan the prophet. But what you didn't see is that God scanned the prophet. That's why he sent them to you. And see, saints, here's what I've learned through life is that when God put people in your life, you learn from them what you need to learn from them. You find yourself judging people that have the anointing for your next season. You find yourself missing the life that God has for you because it was locked up in your profit. It wasn't locked up in your job. It wasn't locked up in your education. It wasn't even locked up in your Bible reading. You know how many people read the Bible that are still broke, still on Section 8, still on food stamp, still don't have no... And I'm not knocking those things. As a matter of fact, I am knocking those things because I come to disrespect comfort zones. I come to disrespect comfort zones. You're a child of the king. Do you think that section eight is all God has for you? Do you think that food stamps is all God has for you when he sent manna from heaven? Do you think that all you're subject to is taking medicine for the rest of your life? When you have the bomb in Gilead, Jesus himself, the healer of all diseases and sicknesses. When the word of God even declared that I'll take the sicknesses off of you and I'll pit them upon your enemies. Saints. Something that Social Security does is it creates a mindset of bondage. And I'm going to tell you a secret. All of these systems, they systemize your mind. They make your mind systematic because you start planning your whole month upon that income. You're stuck. Even your job can enslave you. Okay, I make about what? I make about 28000 See, I got that collard greens look like somebody, like somebody funky in the room. Uh, never mind. Uh, and, and, <laughs> and, and uh, uh, this still popping bottles on the low. Um, and, 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 and you, and you over there, and you out there looking at folk and, 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 okay, I, I make about, well, I make about two grand. I make about two grand, about 800 left. I'm about to have 800 left right there. I got to pay my bill. The, 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 the come up, the, it'll come up about 17. And then I'm going to come up in there. I'm going to come up around there. I'm going to keep on coming up around there. And then I will keep on, and ain't nobody pregnant. And then. I'm going to have about, what, about $200 left over on the fourth week. And so I got to make sure I spend accordingly and I uh, deal with accordingly. And I don't go any further accordingly. And you're saying all this different stuff. And then saints, imagine that after you done planned your life, the Holy Spirit no longer can tell you anything. Because if the Holy Spirit tell you something, you have already decided your safety. Wow. Imagine when you choose your safety, you stop truly worshiping God. And saints, God just put that money in your hand, not because that was the only money he can get to you, but it is a test. And what does the Bible say declares in Psalm 11? What does it declares in Psalm 11? It, it declares... Earlier in the in, in Psalms, it tells us, look at this, look at this. Let's go to verse, let's go to verse, wow, this was in my heart. 
Psalm 11, it says the Lord tries the heart. I watch this here. As a matter of fact, let, let me read it like this. It says the Lord tries the righteous. Meaning these are people that know the way that God does things. The Lord tries the righteous. These are people that know how God flows. You have encountered the knowledge of God through your prophet, through your teacher, through your, through your man of God. They have spoken to you and told you what he likes. And now he's going to give you the opportunity to do it that way. And he's going to try you, meaning that he's going to put you in a predicament where you can either exercise what you've been taught or you can ignore it. Wow. Saints, I've been here many a times. I've been here many a times. And saints, what's so powerful to me is that I remember one time the Lord was teaching me about evangelizing. I evangelized my whole city. Mind you, I evangelized my whole city. And guess where I was? 2010, I was in Dallas, Texas. And guess where I lived? I lived on Camp Wisdom Road. And saints... It took me seven years for the father to come to me. Well, about seven years. The father came to me seven years later and said, son, remember the, the place where you used to stay in 2010? He said, what was the name? I said, Camp Wisdom. He said, exactly. That's why you have the leading wisdom. That's why I pit high measures of wisdom inside of you. I pit the flood, the gates of wisdom inside of you, the angel wisdom with you. Because I took you to a camp. A lot of people don't know where you came from. They think that you just popped up on the scene as a golden boy. They don't know that you went through great tribulation and great trials for me before you even stepped on the scene publicly. Camp wisdom and I evangelized my whole city. Guess what? Guess what I did? I went around telling people Jesus love them. And some people don't recognize me today. They don't recognize me because I did it. I was a little boy. At the time, I was young. And I evangelized the whole city telling, I, I, I would go up to strangers, people that didn't even know me, and tell them that the Lord Jesus love them. And I would minister to people and I would move in healing with some people. I remember I was inside of a grocery store. I was inside of a, a Kroger's. And there was a lady, she had this little wheelchair or something like that. And she, you know how you move around in that, that wheelchair thing. She couldn't walk. And I told her, I said, Jesus love you. I walked past her. I didn't, I didn't even think nothing of it. Lord said, go back and lay your hands on her. I said, oh, Jesus, you trying to get me to go to jail. I see. That's how you rocking. And I had about four conversations. I had two more stuffs that I had to say before I did what God said. I had two more stuff. Now, Jesus, you're going to listen to me. You're not just going to send me. In, in, in. I'm going to go to jail, but I got two more stuff I got to say to you. I tried to explain to Jesus how I was too pretty. And I tried to, I tried to, yeah, I tried to tell him. I said, Lord, don't try to pit no looks on me. And then, then you know, doggone well, you're going to pit me in the, in the whole camp of men's. Men's that ain't had no... Uh, deliciousness in their life uh, they have no 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 deliciousness in their life and, 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 and you gonna put me in the predicament predict a mint and so i then i had another i had two more stuffs i had to say the second stuffs that i had to say i said now jesus you told me not to fight but i got them hands now you don't want me you i left boxing all right i used to box when i was younger they used to call me Pretty Boy Floyd because at the time I was undefeated. I had a couple fights, pop, 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 knocked them out, and I ain't go back to the next fight because I didn't want to lose. 
<laughs> I wasn't going to take no risk. I took my my I took my undefeated reign and I left. And, and there was a lot of people trying to call me out. I told them, you a sissy. You don't want to fight nobody else. Yeah, I know. Y'all say what y'all want. I done knocked out enough. And that's all I'm leaving. I said, Jesus, now listen. I done left my boxing day. Now, now listen, what you want me to do? I'm going to have to pull up. Bless be God. You know what I'm saying? You know how we roll. Bloods. And, and we're going to rock up in there. And I mean, I, I mean blood of the lamb. That's what I really mean. I don't mean no nan, none of that. I don't mean no no Wu Tang Clan ain't nothing to mess with or nothing. That's classic Prophet Joshua. And, and I told the Lord, and, 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 and the Lord said, "Lay your hands on her." I said, "All right." And saints, I was loud too. I ain't even think about nobody in the store. I went up to that lady. I said, "In the name of Jesus, rise!" And saints, that lady looked at me scared like this here. And saying, if you you've been to some of my conferences, you you've seen me. I pull people out like that, like because I don't give them a time to think. You give them a time to think, then they won't naturalize. No, listen to my word. And 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 I developed something the Lord Jesus taught me. He told me, tell people, look in your eyes. Tell people to stare in your eyes. Because if they stare in your eyes, they'll see me. He said the eyes represents the spirit that's in a person. The eyes. So I went to go lay hands up. In the name of Jesus, rise. And that lady, she stared at me like this. And she didn't have a chance. I pulled up. <laughs> I pulled up. I didn't care if she could walk or not. Lay, 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 lay. We going to. We going to do what we got to do, even if we got to fake this out until we make it. Fake it until we make it. We going to do this. I took that lady up, grabbed her by the hand, and that lady was up there trembling like she was about to fall. And I said, come on, let's, let's walk. Let's just walk. Let's walk by the cream of wheat aisle. And I saw some cream of wheat down the street. I don't mean literally down the street. I mean down the aisle. You know, you know, old people always buy the cream of wheat oatmeal out. <laughs> you ain't really had no mama or grandma unless they ate some cream of wheat. I don't care what you say. You thought that was your mama. That wasn't your mama for real. She ain't eat no cream of wheat. Or, or not even cream of wheat, oatmeal. If she, if your mama never had no oatmeal, that wasn't really your mama. You're going to have to do a DNA test. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Something warm in the morning that you stir. If you never saw her stirring nothing, she's not really your mama. Let me just fix it like that. If you never saw your mama stirring nothing, if, if she ain't stir, that's not really your mama. <laughs> and so, so you, you listen, if you want to know, <laughs> if you want to know who your mama is, or uh, listen, if you lose your mama in the store, and you don't know where she at. You don't look every hour. Look on that hour where the cereal and the coffee is, and the, what they call it, the oatmeal is, and the and the 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 and what's that man? That that white man with the with the dough hat on him. They right there somewhere. And, and and you always see them people, right? Why you always see them? They're they're reading their list, and they take their time. How many of y'all have a shot with somebody like that? They take their time. All right, cross that out. Now I can't, I can't fool with you today. Now I can't fool with you, man. I, this too much for me. Like I can't. It, it smell funny in here. Yeah, I no, I'm, I'm trying to help you, but it smell funny in here. So I already got this item right here. But did you get this one down here? You just added that one while we was in here. <laughs> that wasn't on here before. I didn't see that one. You just at. You just added this one too. It got another pen link on there. This another pen ink. Saints, how many y'all ever been so broke that you made your grocery list? I did that before. Saints, I remember one time I was so broke, I, I made my grocery list and I got happy about it. I was eating all the food that's on there with the grocery list. I've done it. 
made the whole grocery list out and I saw myself walking. Now, mind you, do you know that I, everything that I wrote on that list I got and I, I actually walked and did what I saw? Visualization is powerful and you're not going to become rich and wealthy in Jesus until you learn how to do it. You're going to have to learn how to visualize mentally what the word of God says about your prosperity, about your abundance, about your wealth. Until, because he does exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or think. Thinking is dealing strictly with your mind, your visualization, your imagination, what you can see. What you can see. That's how God deals. So if you can't see it, you're not going to have it. God can't take you further than your blindness. You see that? He can't take you further than your blindness. So imagine you got blind spots. You driving with God, but you got blind spots. God can't take you to that region because you'll crash. You got blind spots. There shouldn't be a blind spot within your functionality after you have the knowledge of God inside of you. Everything must be taken authority over by you. Take authority over it. Don't let nothing become difficult. I want you to see this. Let's go to Psalm 71 verse 21. Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Listen to this word of God now. Listen to this word of God. This word of God became everything to me. I went from sleeping inside of my car to sleeping inside of uh, sleeping as a superstar. <laughs> I went from sleeping inside of my car to sleeping as a superstar. I, I, I thought about that. I woke up inside of a car ceiling and I praise God. Now I wake up inside of high ceilings and I praise God. My path was way different than you, baby. You think this a game? This is this, this real talk here. I know what it means to be Lazarus, but I disrespected that nigga a long time ago. I received Abraham. <laughs> I know what it means to be Lazarus. I know what it means to have sores on your body. I know. I know what it means to be a beggar. I begged before. Saints, I was a thug. <laughs> you, heard, you heard what I said? I was a thug. I can't tell you some of the stuff I did. Nobody know what I did. Moses caught a body. So let me tell you something. Let me, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. When Moses was talking, when, Mo, when, Mo, when Moses was talking, when Mo, let the church say hallelujah. Let, let the church say praise the Lord. Let the church say hallelujah. Moses caught a body. Praise God. Remember when Moses tried to go rebuke them, they said, Moses, who are you trying to talk to us? We saw you caught a body the other day. <laughs> Moses went into hiding for 40 years because they told him that they saw him caught the body. Moses thought he was going to Jerusalem prison, Syrian prison. He didn't want to be around them some Hussein looking folks. And then Bin Laden cousins. He didn't want to be around him. He ran for 40 years. God had to appear before him in a burning bush. <laughs> no, nah, no, nah, I'm going to tell you. See, I, and that's all I'm going to say because God, God has never released me and say certain stuff in, and that, that's just how we roll. But I'm going to tell you something. I, I made my initiation. David did it. <laughs> Moses, 
Moving along. <laughs> Psalm 71, verse 21. Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Now, I told you this story, and, and it really did happen to me. I was on my way to preach for one. For the first time, I had my mother with me, and we was driving inside our vehicle. I had a like small, fast car, son. And while we was inside the vehicle, I was driving to the airport that morning. And while I was driving, uh, there was a there was a there was a person in this big old pickup truck with high wheels. Uh, and they was driving beside, and they was like real threatening. And um, I realized that the person was troublesome at the time. I had worship music in my car. I was just when my mother my mother was in passenger seat. I was driving, and while I was inside the vehicle. The person like went to go ram me and I caught it and I know it was the Holy Spirit when he went go ram me I, I I did the car over and he was right here and I was right there and he went go ram me and and I felt the intensity of God in those moments I knew that I was being attacked by the devil himself and um my mother stayed calm my mother prophetic I stayed calm, but at the same time, I got hostile because I realized, oh, all right, I'm dealing with something right here. You know, what do you do? You can't call nobody. You can't do nothing. You're on the road. It's just you. And me and him was on the road, and we was on the highway, as a matter of fact. Um, and he was doing this for a matter of time. And so um, I moved over. I kept on driving. He moved over, too. So I was inside the vehicle, I was driving, and as I stand in the presence of God, the man's vehicle spun around and started flipping underneath the, the bridge. As I stand in the presence of God, God, my witness, it started, God told me I could say this, can't nobody could do me nothing. And his stuff started flipping, 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 flipping. And here's what God told me. He said, son, keep on going. Because I, I was stunned. I was shocked. Because I, I didn't do nothing to him. And as I was driving, I saw a big old angel. The Lord said, I sent your angel to flip his car. Because either you was going to die off of him. Or I was going to take him out. And he said, you carrying my mission on the earth. I sent you to the earth. He not carrying my mission. So it was either you or him. I took him out. Now, as I stand in the presence of God, I knew that man was dead. But God told me, keep on going. I caught my flight. When I got to the flight, I, I actually had some thoughts. I was like, man, Tia say, they might get reported. They might try to do something to me or something like that. God said, what, what, you, what are they going to do to you? You didn't do nothing. I did it. If they look at the cameras, you didn't, you ain't pointing no gun. You ain't pit no, pit no hands on nobody. You, you was inside your vehicle. Anything like that. But see, that person was sent by the devil to take me out that day. I was on my way to go preach. I was on my way to go prophesy. I got to Juan Church. I, I, Juan will tell you, I hopped in Juan Church prophesying inside the church. And, I, and Juan, Juan know I'm real. Juan, you, you know how Juan know I'm real? Because Juan saw how I minister. I told Juan, I said, please, don't let nothing come to me about who I'm meeting. I don't want to know their names. I don't want to know nothing. I said, let me minister from a pure place. I said, I don't want to know who's chaperone. I don't want to know nothing. Don't tell me dot, 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 dot. And here's what I did. I told Juan, oh, Juan know I'm real. And this was years ago. I was... What else? 2014, 2015. I told Juan, I said, listen, write down this name, this name, this name. And I said, don't even tell me if I'm right. Just write down the name. And I said, when I come there, I'll talk further. That's 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 how that's that's how we was moving. So so <laughs> and then this this way before y'all know know about me or anything. So you imagine, like, you know what I'm saying? I mean, come on. So that, that's how that's how we was moving way back then, way back then. Juan was with me when one time there was a person from uh, 
there was somebody from a famous thing, and they they was they came and they was like prophesy to me, and I was like. I didn't say nothing. I told Juan, I pulled Juan over to the side. I said, listen, you see them? I said, I can prophesy to them, but the Holy Spirit told me it's not my place to prophesy. Number one, I'm not here to prophesy. Uh, the man of God ministering is not my, it's not, it's, this is not my, not my, my uh, it's not my position. And so time went by. And then the Holy Spirit told me, he said, son, go talk to the person and take one with you. The person was up there saying, you know, you know, if he a prophet, why he, don't, why he can't prophesy to me? I took one with me and I took the young man over to the side and I started prophesying to the young man. I started telling him about all the mixtapes that he was doing in secret. I told him all the different TV things he was doing in secret and the names of the CDs that he was doing in secret and all the stuff that he had prayed for God to do in secret. And the person was shocked. And I took a while with me. After I was finished, I just walked away. Because I still knew I was dealing with a nigga spirit. Not because you minister to people. I don't mean that they're right. They'd be the worst people. People, people. you don't forget, people be up there wicked as I don't know what. You hit it, and you quit it. You're not trying to get their phone number or nothing. And I'm talking about prophecy. I know they're going to take this bit out and make a video. I'm talking about prophecy here. I say you hit it, and then you touch your neighbor now. All right. Psalm 71, verse 21. Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. The Father is telling you that I make a covenant to increase you. Your greatness. Saints, do you know what greatness means? This means the level in the spirit that you're at. All right, you swallowed the tea. Thank you. All right, just want to make sure. Keep it tea. All right, thank you. Hallelujah. I'm still your daddy. All right. I'm still your daddy. Now, Psalm 71, verse 21. Thou shalt increase my greatness. Your greatness is your level in the spirit. Your greatness is the level of abundance that God lets you carry. Your greatness is the stature, the rank that you're in in the spirit. And every rank gives you revelation and it also gives you riches. Because that, that rank, that revelation is going to birth substance in your life. It's going to make you have more of what you desire and what you want. That's why Psalm 115 verse 14 talk about the Lord shall increase you more and more. But in Psalm 115 it said that the Lord shall bless both small and great. So that means that you had, you had a level where you don't got much and you had a level in the spirit where you don't know much. He'll empower you. And if you had a level where you do know much and you do have much, he'll empower you too. Remember what the Lord Jesus said that you will have more abundance. Thou shalt increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. What is the side? Remember, you got food and then you got sides and your sides might be mac and cheese, collard greens, all the different sides. Well, watch what happened. He said he'll comfort you on every side. That means that you got your meal. Your meal is to do the will of the father. That's your meat. But then you got those sides. You got those little things that come your way. Those little things that attack, those little things that oppose, those little things that you want God to fix. He said, I'll comfort you on every side. Comfort mean that I'm going to see it that is disturbing you and I'm going to bring safety. I'm going to bring. Sharika, you better not be eating no broccoli. We're going to give you some. Uh, what are we going to give you some? We're going to give you some uh, two thighs. 
Uh, we're going to give you thighs and we're going to get all the greasy chicken possible. Uh, I'm, I'm going to call Church's Chicken myself. And they're going to hand you some biscuits and all of that. The most greasiest, dirtiest chicken possible. That's what I'm going to do. Greasiest, dirtiest chicken possible. Saints, hey, you see everybody that be having heart attacks be in the church of chicken line. <laughs> I was behind somebody one time years ago. I remember he looked back at me and said, what you want something with me, OG? I'm like, nah, I'm not going to kill you. I know you got about two more weeks. I'm not. What that got? What that got to do with me, player? I'm not about to stop. I'm not about to judge you. Get your little finger on right now. Because you fingering now, but you about to be. F That's all I'm going to say. Psalm 71 verse 21. He'll comfort me on every side, every side where you have been opposed, every side where you need the intervention of the Father. He said he'll comfort you. That means that there'll be no area of your life that's troubling you. The Lord will fix it. Thou shalt increase my greatness. Increase my greatness, rank in the spirit. But also, not only increase my greatness, my realm in the spirit, but increase my revelation. If I increase my revelation, it'll increase my riches. Because righteousness comes with riches. And you know that from our Proverbs chapter 8, I believe. Righteousness comes with riches. Now, I want to I wanna say this to you. Psalm 102 talks about the set time for favor. Here's what the father told me. There's the set time and there's the seed time. The body of Christ has only known prayer time and fasting time. The body of Christ have not known seed time. And the seed time is the major realm that could tap you into all the benefits of fasting time and prayer time combined. Seed time can give you the same level of authority that prayer time and fasting time combine. And seed time gives you authority over the set time. Wow. So whenever I'm operating in seed time, it's my set time for favor. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. No, this the Lord told me. The Lord told me that the, the seed time, every time you in seed time, you in the set time. And you can have the same authority as prayer time and fasting time with your seed time. Because the seed time is a law that governs the whole universe. Seed time redeems time. Every time I'm moving with sowing, I'm perfecting that which concerns me. I'm a co-worker with God. Now, remember Psalm 82 said that you are gods. When I sow, I have a God functionality that I can now activate. So, so when I'm prophesying to the dry bones like Ezekiel, I'm creating just like God. I'm in the ye are gods realm through the seed. Sowing will tap you into the ye are God's realm. My Godship is in seed time. How I take my money and what I have and I invest it into the Lord. That gives me a harvest of godliness and divinity. Godliness is when God's realm overflows in my nature. Godliness is when God's personality overflows in my attitude. Godliness is an overflow. 
Seed time is where I welcome God into my present and my future. My seed has creation power. That's not just money I'm releasing. That's my future I'm releasing. I'm not just releasing money, I'm releasing faith. I'm not just releasing money, I'm releasing miracles. Seed time is the set time for favor. Whenever I'm sowing, favor flowing. 